going to see a few techniques which is going to improve the performance of your S3 buckets and when you consider that S3 is being used by players like Netflix, Airbnb and Pinterest uh, we need to see how they are optimizing the performance of their S3 bucket so that they can cater to millions of customers and these are all customers spread across uh, multiple geographies and they are operating at different time zones and you will not know or you will not be able to clearly predict or where, what time your peak demand is going to happen or what event is going to trigger a peak demand. So you have to architect or engineer your applications or your buckets in such a way that they can always deliver the highest performance at all times. So here are a few techniques which can help you achieve that. So the one of the most common thing is uh, transfer acceleration. Enable it whenever you need it because it moves your data between Amazon Edge locations and it moves between uh, Amazon's own internal uh, networking. Uh, so it is the best thing to do if you want to do longer distance, larger files, then the least amount of uh, upload time that you will achieve. Uh, so if you want to go ahead and check what the kind of uh, speed that you will get, the URL is given to you at the bottom. If you go ahead and test it, it will upload certain files and give you a speed result saying this is the transfer acceleration that you can achieve. So let me go ahead and try that now. You can see here when I just went into the URL it is uh, automatically starting to upload something from my browser and you can see the blue bar growing slowly and it is trying to upload a file to Virginia and it is going to do that for almost all the regions and give me a comparison for uh, um, different regions and say this is the transfer acceleration that you can reach when you're doing uh, it from this region. So this is going to take a while. At least uh, I've seen it last time you did it or at least two to three minutes it took uh, for the test to complete in all the regions. So while the transfer acceleration test is going on at the background, let us go ahead and see what other options we have for improving the performance of our S3 bucket. So that is how the internal optimized bandwidth throughput path or network path looks like. Uh, so this is a chart that I have made um, in case the uh, test is taking more time. You can see here the difference between the public internet transfer and the S3 transfer acceleration rate. So the yellow color bars that you can see here and the green color bars, that is the difference. So typically, uh, if you are nearest to that location, you get a very high bandwidth. And this is a test that was done from 500 GB of upload uh, to a bucket in Singapore region. And so if you notice that, it, of course, obviously, when you're doing it from Singapore to Singapore, the difference is very, very minimal. And especially if you're doing it from a corporate network, you will have a very high bandwidth. So let's just move forward. So another interesting thing that Amazon offers is uh, faster uploads or multi-part uploads. It is called as uh, parallel uploads. So if you have an original object that you, if you can see the image on the left hand side and the very top there is a big file that one big file of let us say 5 MB or 10 MB then what you do is you go ahead and split them up into multiple parts. Say you, if there is um, 1 GB let us take an example and I'm going to split them into 10 parts of 100 MB in size and I'm going to write a program or a software which will upload this 100 MB into 10 different streams into my S3 bucket and when the object is reaching my S3 bucket, they will all be put together into a single object and I will get a finalized object in S3 as a single one. So this way I can achieve higher bandwidth because each of those 10 different streams will be uh, trying to achieve my maximum bandwidth. And this way I will also avoid bottlenecks in the network. So this is another way it has to be done programmatically. And if you have an API interface, if you're familiar with the writing, your uh, your SDKs, then you can split up your file into multiple parts and put them. So Amazon calls it as a parallel puts. And of course, these are charged a little differently because you are not uh, uploading only once, you are uploading 10 different files. So each, if you remember, each put and get is charged in Amazon. Uh, so this is a put is a right operation and you will be charged for different uh, puts that you are putting into Amazon. And so this will make sure that if a part particular stream is failed, you are going to upload only that particular stream. You are not going to upload it uh, again, the entire file. 
so this way you are reducing the number of errors when you're uploading larger files and you don't have to restart on every failure on a error prone network so if you are working in such a network consider parallel boots as one of the option to upload your files then parallel gets let us say now you want to download a lot of files then you also get something called as a parallel gets uh, so it is not only upload you can uh, get, use this option for uh, parallel gets also again it's a programmatic way of accessing some files here i have given the header object for a particular get and you can notice it it says range and in this range i'm saying uh, from bytes 0 to 9 fetch um, in the data so i'll make multiple get operations the next get operation will be like from bytes 10 to 15 something like that so depending upon what kind of op uh, file or object that you're retrieving you can go ahead and choose the range and go ahead and retrieve it so once again it requires a little bit of a knowledge about the object as well as the programs or applications that you're writing on top of it then you can retrieve them and what it does is it caches the caches the object at edge and you can also you uh, make sure that there is a low latency data transfer for your end user because you are retrieving small amount of data and constantly feeding it to your uh, application uh, to put it in real use case think of a mobile app and you're opening an image which is really big in size with high resolution and if you notice that the images will appear in pieces or blocks by block so this is what is happening on the background uh, the application or the mobile app is going to retrieve data in small chunks and as and when it receives the data it is processing it in your app and start showing it then you will also get the feeling that the download is happening instead of waiting for the entire image to appear on your screen at one shot so that is how you improve your user experience by using parallel gets so the another way of improving your performance of your s3 bucket is distributing your key names uh, for example let us say uh, you you need to introduce randomness and the reason for that is if you're searching for a bucket and if you are all the file names are starting with the same uh, prefix amazon is going to search for all the keys and then going to identify the particular key that you are interested in uh, so if you don't want amazon to search for all the keys and then identify your particular file you need to introduce some randomness at the beginning because each file has a hash map or amazon has an index of uh, all the buckets uh, so each uh, unique key or a prefix uh, creates a unique hash map and then it increases the amount of time or decreases the amount of time to retrieve that file so that is why amazon recommends having a randomness at the beginning of your file for a high transaction processing systems uh, so if you have an image upload feature and uh, people are retrieving those images faster and faster also if you have those kind of use cases then try to consider adding an reversed timestamp because even if you do a timestamp of hhmm you are for 60 seconds or 60 uh, how, or 24 hours the first key is going to be uniform but if you start it with seconds it is going to constantly increment so you have some kind of randomness at the beginning of the file so consider this as a recommendation on how you want to set up uh, do this file so in short amazon saying don't do this don't prefix it by date uh, see you see here it will start searching all the 2003 files uh, 2013 files and then it will try to identify file number 136 if you want to interested in this file and it is going to increase the delay in your applications so amazon recommends it don't do this instead what you do is you reverse the timestamp and then you go ahead and uh, use it so typically uh, this is what happens in the background when you do year wise in the beginning amazon creates a partition and all the keys with having similar names will go into one partition and all the applications trying to retrieve that file uh, will go ahead and search that partition only you can see here a lot of mobile devices and other applications are hitting the same partition and this is going to reduce the speed or the response time from that partition when i say partition this is how amazon stores data on the background for your s3 bucket and these partitions are decided by your key names so if all the key names are similar everything ends up in one partition but if you introduce some randomness say for example let us uh, say that your key has been created like this and your uh, seconds and hours and minutes timestamp is moved forward now and you have created objects like this 
and if you're trying to retrieve the data now all of them is going to retrieve in different partitions and your performance of your s3 bucket is also going to increase now so that is why it says distribute your key names add some randomness so all the partitions will be utilized effectively so inventory this is another use case uh, when you have a lot of objects in your bucket you want to know how many objects that i have what is the parameter metadata about this object when it was created and what is the content all those things and when you have millions it is not easy to do it manually and if you are doing it in your own programs you are going to consume a lot of uh, get uh, calls and each of those get calls are going to charge you uh, money so instead amazon has created an inventory which we saw some time back in the dashboard you go ahead and create an inventory and fill in the details saying i want an inventory of all the objects in my bucket amazon will create a simple csv file and put it into another target bucket and you can see here it is charging you about uh, less than a cent for million objects so even if you have let us say 10 million objects uh, you will be charged about 2.5 cents uh, so that is the amount of uh, money that you will be spending if you are creating an inventory for million objects very it's very very less but if you are going to do it of your own uh, that will be like a million get request and you are going to be charged for those million get request so use inventory option whenever you want to get a list of all that things that are in your bucket metrics um, we saw this if you want to know how much request is happening how much uh, data is uh, getting stored or retrieved any point in time the data gb transfers and if you want to have analytics of those things go ahead and use those metrics uh, in your uh, s3 dashboard and then you can also configure your CloudWatch also to trigger some alarms saying suddenly if there's a spike in the usage of your S3 bucket, uh, which is not normal. You can go ahead and take a corrective action or investigate why there is a spike, whether it is a legitimate business use case or somebody who is not supposed to be doing something is doing something there. Like, for example, copying or making a, a separate copy of the items that is in your bucket, which is confidential. So you can uh, do a metrics for the type of storage. You can do a metric for the number of requests. You can do a metric for the number of objects in your storage. So those are the three type of metrics that are available currently. Uh, finally, uh, there are two options uh, that has recently Amazon has introduced. Uh, now we have a lot of data in our uh, Amazon uh, uh, bucket and if you want to query the data because when you're doing having a data you want to process some data it is not just that uh, you want to keep that data there and you don't want to do anything uh, so in those cases amazon has introduced a mechanism to query your data directly from your s3 bucket itself and this service is called as uh, athena and you don't have to load anything into a database or anything to run your sql queries for athena all you have to do is create your table and then uh, give the sql query Amazon will go ahead and run that SQL query across all your S3 data and then uh, you are charged for the amount of data that you are retrieving or amount of data that you are picking up from your buckets. So you can see here at the bottom it says that about five dollars per terabyte uh, scanned data. For, uh, so if you're going to say one uh, gigabyte then it's something like one divided by five dollars I mean thousand divided, five divided by thousand dollars. So it's very very cheap if you consider it that way and if you are going to compress your data and store it in s3 uh, the data retrieval is going to be very very less and you're going to be charged very very less as well and there are another ways to improve your uh, amount of data that you are querying if you're storing it in uh, let us say csv format uh, not the best efficient format let us say csv or a tsv or text format these are all uncompressed formats uh, you are going to have more cost but uh, Amazon recommends store them in Apache ORC or Parquet format. These are all compressed formats and Athena has been optimized for processing data which are stored in these formats. Uh, then the amount of data that you are going to retrieve or scan is going to be very less. And that's why your cost is also going to be very, very less. Uh, so you can recommend your application teams or your uh, data scientist who might be using these kind of features. Uh, to tell them that these are the formats that are recommended by Amazon and this will impact the cost as well as the performance of the query also. 
uh, think of it this way if you're running a query and you need to wait for 10 minutes uh, it is not interesting to do a lot of queries you will be very careful about what type of queries you can run and the whole thing that we are like google, about google is you write, write the query and you get a response immediately you correct it and then until you get the right response you keep on changing your query because of the speed of uh, google gives us all it happens in real world also if a data scientist or somebody is working on some items and if you're going to wait for some time for getting a response the innovation that happens is slows down so these are all the different uh, optimization techniques that amazon offers to improve your performance of your s3 buckets uh, if you are not able to do any of them some of them might not be easy to achieve some of them might be easier to achieve so start with the smaller ones say transfer acceleration multi-part uploads multi-part downloads and you can also go ahead and enable metrics and inventory and analytics all this of your own um, but if you are going to use Athena then you will need some help and assistance from your database administrators to write your queries in the best way so go ahead and try it out if you have any questions let me know so here we are at the back at the s3 transfer acceleration page you can see here almost all the us regions are slower for me almost all but oregon says that uh, uh, it's a seven percentage faster uh, whereas uh, when you go for something like singapore i'm getting nine percentage faster and mumbai is also a few kilometers away from me so it says that about i can get 35 percentage faster speed by enabling transfer acceleration in mumbai and uh, it's london is about 12 percentage faster so Transfer acceleration helps you, but in not all cases, say I want to put it in Ohio, I'm not going to achieve anything by enabling transfer acceleration. So choose it wisely when you're trying to look for transfer acceleration as one of the options.